I think one of the most exciting things about this project is this is only the beginning. That we create an outdoor learning hub, we create a wee forest, but in five years time, in 10 years time, in 50 years time, that's gonna be transformational. This little wood here behind me is going to be tiny for three or four years, but in 10 years, in 20 years, in 50 years, we will have a wooded area with a whole new ecology and campus will effectively be rewilded. And then you think of the learning that will go on in that as that grows and develops and all the things we haven't thought of yet, all the different people that are going to get involved and all the learning that will happen and all the people that will appreciate being in a natural environment but in a place of learning that really wants to make a difference in Scotland and the world. The Outdoor Learning Hub and We Forest are going to be used in multiple ways. We already run some of our seminars in learning sustainability outdoors and this is just going to enhance that. So there will be an outdoor classroom but also a discovery trail around campus that will really uh, take folk through multiple places for nature to really understand that small places like a, a local hedgerow or a local woodland margin or a local pond or a local bit of uh, planting like we've got here with the wee forest can be used as a, as a learning environment. You know Patrick and the team you know they are going to use it primarily to educate the students and, and enable the student teachers to know how to use these spaces properly. For us as Architecture and Design Scotland uh, it's really important that we have a wide impact with the work that we do and we felt that by working with QMU to collaborate on the Outdoor Learning Hub it gives the potential to influence future teachers. So I think in terms of challenges you know I think QMU are really lucky that they have a fantastic campus with a fantastic landscape already. It's not about creating huge new interventions. You know, it's about working with the existing landscape and the existing context, which will be a challenge for a lot of schools. We've been really lucky here having Nature Scott come involved and bring the Wee Forest project, which is what's happening today. Outdoor Learning Hub is a really, really exciting project because it brings together uh, a number of different habitats and a way of interacting with them. So we're particularly excited about the wee forest uh, that's being created today. The wee forest idea has been around since 1970 um, when Dr. Akira Miyawaki in Japan came up with the idea of creating a tennis court sized forest um, with lots and lots of soil sampling and ground preparation to give the best possible start for the tree trees and the trees are planted really densely so that they grow quickly um, and force themselves up and uh, that way there's um, semi-natural mature woodland a lot faster than um, planting in a normal urban tree uh, planting sense. And so uh, the challenge has been that it's never been tried out this far north before in the world. Yeah, so we're going to start, of course, with our initial teacher education programme because what we're really keen to do is that the, the teachers that leave our university when they go out into schools have got the confidence and the knowledge to how to use outdoor education. But we see it applying across all of our programs from drama students to nursing students to art therapy students so they can take those skills because what we've understood is that being outside brings a, just a natural sense of well-being so you start from a great point and what you want on top of that is to give the skills and understanding about how you teach outside and how you make the best of the elements. Today is a marvellous example. We've had snow this morning, it's breezy, it's sunny and yet everyone is going around including myself with a smile on their face. So you start from a, a fantastic place and then it's a question of building on that, having the facilities and the skills to make the most of it. I think the impact will be felt over many years um, in part because we will be training um, the teachers of the future here. Um, so every year there will be about 130 to 140 new um, primary teachers graduating from Queen Margaret University and those teachers will have been taught outdoors themselves but the Outdoor Learning Hub will also get them to see the, the different ways in which you can use spaces and how relatively easy it can be in order to build and to create a space um, in any school. Um, so hopefully the, the students that we have will, will take that learning, take that experience, they'll take it to their schools that they go to work in, and that means that they will be affecting the lives of young people going through primary schools for decades to come um, on the basis of what they're doing here at the Learning Hub. I think one of the main things around about creating a new space or reimagining the spaces that you have is to make sure that you have buy-in from everybody in the organisation. Um, in order to do this, 
We needed to make sure that the senior leadership team were on board and, and understood the importance of it. We also needed to make sure there were representatives from the estates team that we could coordinate with. We needed to make sure there was representatives from the educational team, the teaching team, and we also needed to make sure we had feedback from the students. Um, we were collaborating with a number of other partners, Architecture and Design Scotland, Nature Scott, um, and also the designers. You know, we, we, we talk first of all from the, the point of view of the teacher training courses that we run. Um, um, this is where the original idea came from, was to be delivering outdoor learning to um, primary teachers and secondary school teachers within the, the, the programmes that we run on campus. But it's grown a lot from there as well. We've got a lot of links with community partners, local primary schools and uh, with the wider university itself in terms of opening up the spaces around campus to lots of different or, uh, courses to be able to run different programmes and to be able to take a lot of the learning outside and just make it a bit more interesting and a bit more fun. The idea is to make a space which is accessible to all and can be used for a multitude of um, different types of activities from drama workshops to outdoor learning to school groups coming up and just even doing storytelling sessions and um, the idea is to just make it as versatile as possible uh, by not defining it and making it a very open plan outdoor learning space. The campus here at, at, at QMU has is, is, um, got a lot of opportunities for development. We're already looking at the sort of the wider landscaping strategy to, to try and make that more um, amenable uh, for the students and staff on the campus but also the local community. Uh, dementia friendly East Lothian for instance have been keen to utilise the grounds here enabling that through Architectural Design Scotland and getting a team together in the university um, that all worked very well and a lot of collaboration there um, and there's been a lot of um, collaboration with um, East Lothian Green Spaces and everybody really came together very well. Um, today we've had the children planting there today so they can come back see how the trees are growing, they can measure the height of them each year, um, you, know, you can even go to the detail of um, is there any temperature differences between where the groups of trees are and in the wider green spaces around. So, and it's also meeting the climate emergency and the, the woodland creation targets that we currently have in Scotland. So um, there's 600 trees being planted in this small area. Uh, of various um, native species and you know that that's also going to um, create a small biodiversity habitat there and so the benefits not just for people but for wildlife and biodiversity as well. Kind of green infrastructure and biodiversity and access to nature have been like really hot topics recently and like, rightly so because with climate change and everything that's happening there's a lot of pressures um, to make our outdoors like the most that they can be and offer us the most that they can be and not just to us but also to nature. So this has been, you know, with um, all the recent policies that are coming out in Scotland, like the National Planning Framework 4 is just coming out now and that's really pushing for green infrastructure and for um, making that the most that it can be in Scotland because that with itself brings all sort of ecosystem services. It's not just uh, cultural, it's not just for education, but it's like relates to people's health. Um, it relates to their well-being, it relates to their wealth, to like green jobs and even anything that you can think of from pollination, food production, um, like water management and like prevention of floods and all that kind of stuff. So by making the outdoors and people a little bit more closely knit, it just helps everybody, creates like a better future for everybody. Okay, so we've just had Stonyhill Primary um, come through and do the first phase of the planting. I'll take you into the forest and have a look at the progress we've made so far. And within this area, we'll plant 600 trees. So the species that have been chosen all have a niche to fill within that forest. So they all complement each other within this wee forest. And one of the big key differences and one of the really exciting things about the Wee Forest project is the ongoing citizen science engagement. So. The idea behind is that oh, as the forest establishes and as the forest grows, groups will be coming in and monitoring the forest health. These tags and their numbers go into a database so that when we look back, we can check to see how the forest is doing. So other than monitoring the, this, the, the health of the forest and how the forest is developing, there will also be opportunities for invertebrate studies, so butterfly and other invertebrate studies to see what benefits and what wildlife come in as a result of this wee forest.
So I have a company called Big Wildlife and we do a lot of youth work, a lot of community work, as well as um, doing the FOLA down at QMU. So I would envision um, a lot of those projects being able to benefit from it um, and, and especially using it in a youth work context to kind of get to break down those barriers of um, university being a possibility for some young people. So today we're training in uh, the Forest and Outdoor Learning Award and we are sawing things, we are lopping things, we are doing a little bit of woodland management, we are um, doing a little bit of tree ID. So lots of different things to kind of get that nature connection and get people confident in being able to work outdoors with children. Just in terms of allowing children to uh, have a space where they can learn isn't necessarily in the classroom. Not all children manage in the classroom um, with the amount of stimulation that goes on. So being outside can actually just allow their, their brains to, to open up and, and kind of absorb more of the learning that's going on. Um, so that's what we're doing today. Um, they're currently using a saw, so they're using bow saws to create uh, bag tags or necklaces. Um, we've also been doing conservation tasks, opening up the woodland floor to allow new, new growth um, and create habitats for, for other animals that maybe don't have one. It's handy to know that when you're doing a course like primary education, you've got that kind of facility like at your uni um, it just makes it feel a little bit more like actually part of the course as opposed to like you're just ticking a box because you have to go somewhere to do it. Um, it's a lot more like interactive I think for everybody as well. I mean I've worked in a nursery before and I think a lot of kids enjoy being outdoors. It shouldn't just all be toy based like I said you know like even for for us as students but for children it's to know that you can anything can be a toy anything can be like used for learning or for fun you learn so much even just being outdoors like your colors your numbers like writing it doesn't have to all be sitting at a desk and you know looking at a board i would definitely say outdoors the way to go